Without a vision, the people perish. Welcome to Vision Plus, a program featuring a positive outlook, dealing with everyday situations of marriage, children, and business. Believing Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Teacher, author, speaker, delighting audiences from New York to Sacramento with a heart and message for the people today. Bonnie would like to remind you of the 800 number on the screen. Please feel free to call at any time throughout the broadcast and share your concerns. Leave your prayer request and someone will pray with you. And now, teacher, author, and speaker. Welcome, I'm Bonnie Libhart, and you're watching Vision Plus. Without a vision, the people perish. And I do want to have a verse for you today. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, our Father. And I think that that is something that we can all live with. Uh, And I'm glad that I have my best friend in all of the world, my boyfriend, my fiancé, my husband, Tony Libhart. Tony, welcome. Welcome, buddy. (laughs) I tell you what, after 50 years, he's still my best friend. There's been days that we we only considered divorce once, murder maybe a few hundred times, but we did all right. Okay, what I wanted to do, we read the Bible every morning and have our devotional, and he has from a friend of ours from, oh, 40 years ago, Ray Lee Overton, that gave him a book that's also another devotional, so we read that too. That's fun. And you know what he does for me? Not only does he bring me a cup of coffee, but he also will read to me and put me back to sleep sometimes if it's really early, like this morning. Uh, I really appreciate that, especially if I don't get any sleep during the night. What I wanted to ask him about is some of the impressions he's had of our reading over the last several years. And uh, what are some of the things you've observed from the Israeli, the Israelites, when God uh, would talk to them, um, put the Moses on the mountain, and he wrote his name, uh, the Ten Commandments on the um, stone, Tell us something that had that you maybe observed over the years with the Israelites, their highs and lows. Well, for one thing, God kept telling Moses, they're a stiff-necked people. And then I realized they're kind of like we are, stiff-necked, don't want to listen, don't want to pay attention. We have our own ideas about what we think is right. But if we can ever learn to let go of that and just go on back and take a look what God said we're supposed to do and think like and to honor him and the things that are his, including his son, that he will handle it for us so we don't have to worry about it. We don't have to worry about Obama, McCain, uh, Biden, Palin. We don't even have to worry about each other, including ourselves, because he'll take care of it. That's what he said, and all I have to do is believe him and do my best to do what he tells me that I'm supposed to do. Well, how does he tell me? He put it in my heart. I really already know what's right and what isn't, and if I have any doubt, I can just go read it again right back to the source. Um, I enjoy reading the Bible. I didn't when I first started reading it. The, the first year that we did this, it was a little tough for me because I didn't want to slow down and pay attention to anything except what I felt like paying attention to. Um, I do like the sciences. I like mathematics. I did not like history. I did not like reading. I did not like writing. Now I do like it. So in the past over 50 years, um, I changed. And I hope that I grew and became a better person and better equipped. 
to live in this world and to make life a little bit better for everybody who I come in contact with. That includes you, Bonnie. Yay, I like that plan. And you are better. You've mellowed over the years, and you have uh, become sweeter. And there was a time in our marriage that you'd lose your temper. Now, it never was uh, anybody that drank or smoked or chewed or went out with women who do. Now, he did have one exact time that he smoked a cigarette, because I did used to smoke. Now, this has been over 30 years ago, so I haven't smoked in a long time, and one of the reasons I quit was a little story about his one cigarette. Okay. Our son was about five or six. Our next-door neighbor was a veterinarian. He had a son about the same age as our son. And uh, <clears throat> the next door boy gave our son Anthony a little package of cigarette exploders. And I didn't know he had them, and he stuck a couple of them in a cigarette. And he said, Daddy, we need to get Mom to smoke one of these cigarettes. So he pulled this one out pretty far. And I said, I can tell you how to get her to stop. I'll smoke it. And Pardon me. I'll smoke it. She knows I don't smoke. When she sees me start, she'll quit. He said, do you really want to smoke it? I said, sure. So I took it. And he got scared and nervous. He went over and jumped on her lap. He was holding on to her neck. He said, Mom, watch Daddy. <laughs> so I lit it. And the first puff was great. And I'm there puffing and blowing a little smoke. I put it in and took the second drag on it. Balooey, that thing blew up. It it got about that big, this bunch of cigarette tobacco, and it scared me, but it also got me real angry. And I was heading for him, and then I, I caught myself, and I thought, I can't hit that poor kid. I know I did, should not smoke. I will never touch another one. And she never touched another one because she knew that he probably could get some more of those little exploders. So she quit. That was a good thing. I don't recommend that for people because you can get a heart attack from that. I, I still remember the shock. It, the, it looked like fur hanging out of his lips. It was all of those... From the cigarettes and the white and the, uh, the tobacco and the white thing around the tobacco. Yep, that was uh, first and last for him and the last for me. So that was a good thing that we both quit smoking at that moment <laughs> many years ago. But there is a thing about uh, what we're going through, and that is we have some serious issues that are coming up. And uh, there are certain people that appear to be following what the Lord wants us to do to lead our way. And I know the Bible says that no one's in charge that he doesn't put there. So we have to just pray and say, okay, God, we have a certain person that we'd like to have in um, in leading our country and leading the world. But we we turn it over to you. We know that the right thing is going to happen. But what are some of the issues that you think that you believe in that it would be great if our leaders believed in them? Well, I do believe that overtaxing people who are willing to work and who are successful to pay to people who do not work and I'm not talking about people who cannot. I'm talking about those who refuse to because it's easy to just accept the give, uh, gift. Um, I don't think that we're supposed to do that. Because if you don't eat because you haven't worked, it's your fault. If you don't eat because there's something wrong that you cannot work, then you need assistance. Um, that's a real tough question 
and even though I'm doing my best, I'm soul searching for a correct answer. We may not have a correct answer. We'll have to come up with an answer and try it and see if it works. And I think that's about as far as we can carry that question. Well, I really want someone that believes in um, the sanctity of life, that they will not want uh, babies to be aborted, and that they will want to have, uh, I can't imagine, um, billionaires like Buffett and the Pritzkers and the other billionaires that I've known of over the years to um, to to take their wealth and just give it to everybody because what I've observed, you can give people money. I remember that time that we were taking Thanksgiving turkeys and Christmas gifts to this family. They had three grown children, and they wouldn't get out and work. Every time you gave them something, they just wanted more and they never would even say, what can I do for you? Because I could have had them to mow my lawn or something. And uh, But they were three grown children in that family that we took the turkeys to and the uh, Christmas gifts to, and they wouldn't work. They just wouldn't work. They were making more money by staying on uh, welfare than they were if they got out and got a job. And I believe in the United States, even with all the layoffs and the turnarounds, that there is some job for every American that's able to work, that is able to work. They just got to be willing. And they maybe can't do. They might have had a high-powered white-collar job in the past, and now they, but I just read where there's so many welders needed. Well, you got to go to welding school, and there's lots of schools you can go to to learn the things that uh, that you don't know. I'm going to the Christian Women's Job Corps, uh, which they have training for anybody that doesn't have a job, and they will train them on things they can do from computers to whatever they need to want and need to learn. So, uh, in addition to not spreading the wealth around and not having uh, babies to be aborted when they're nine month pregnant and the baby's already being born and they suck the brains out of it some people need to watch some of these things and see what happens um, i don't believe in uh, in any of these giveaway programs unless the unless the family needs it there's a lot of times families uh, our daughter has breast cancer and and i think there's times she needs help but uh what do you think will be some of the issues that our country was built on. I know you had, uh, you you had the Constitution. You were going to reprint that. But what are the, some of the things the Constitution says about how to lead our country and what kind of laws and rules we should have? Well, <clears throat> first, I think everybody has the same freedoms and the same opportunity in this country. I think we must be cautious to not just look at a couple of situations and try to draw a conclusion. I think you have to look very broad over a lot of different situations, different people. I also keep remembering as far as spreading finances or who do you pay homage to, who do you pay money to, your taxes or whatever. I remember what Christ did when they asked him, is it right to pay taxes to Caesar or to to uh, give alms to the saints? And he said, well, go get me a coin. And they brought him a coin, not knowing what's he going to say about this. And Jesus was a great teacher, the best teacher. And he said, whose face is on that coin? And they said, well, that's Caesar's. He said, give to Caesar what's due Caesar and pay your alms to those who you need to pay alms to, in so many words. Um, all these questions are difficult. And I have to say it again, we're going to have to make a model of some sorts. Uh, we vote in a model, a, a 
some one we say this is the president and remember the president doesn't have ultimate um, authority in the United States probably the Congress is stronger than the president the president can veto but the Congress can get together and override the president and we elected all of them we elected the president and we elected the other bunch in Washington and whatever bunch is in our state and in our county and in our cities and towns um, we did that we're responsible to learn what those people stand for how they operate how will they perform together um, there's a percentage of them becoming a larger percentage as time goes by that become dishonest and very greedy and some of them just like to fight and some of them like to stick their head in the sand it would be nice if we could find that out before we cast our ballot as to which one really is going to stand up and do what is right we know that none of them are going to do everything they're promising but which ones are going to seek out what's really true and right for our country and our state and our city and county governments? Um, I think that you hit the nail on the head. We still live in a country where you can vote, and even though there's voter fraud, I remember when we were in Arkansas and we first got these um, – voting machines in that prior to that sometimes 111 percent of the population voted in some of the, uh, the counties and cities and I think that that's happened in Florida in Alabama in everywhere the good old boy system works for many years where you put in your buddies you can go to a place of a bank uh, any kind of business and you will see many times all the same nationality because they've gotten their friends the job they knew a job was coming up and they'd get their job their friends this job then i know one of the places where my granddaughter worked that in a restaurant 20 people 20 people have the same are using the same social security number those 20 people live in the same house the owner of the restaurant just got their green card the owner None of the other people have theirs. The owner just got their green card uh, within the last couple months. And that business has been running. They have several businesses, several restaurants, different brand names, different restaurants. That's not right that uh, those jobs should not be given to people who do not have a green card. Now, my bro one brother was married to a a German Jewish girl and they worked hard to get their citizenship uh, another one was married to an Indonesian she worked very hard to get her citizenship she is a hard worker she will work from the time the job task needs to start till the task is complete I call her a den wit do it now whatever it takes that's what uh, hard-working Americans do. When I was a little girl in the German prisoners of war, worked on our farm and then uh, for my dad, and I took water to him. Later, many of those came back to the United States to be teachers and professional people and workers because they loved the United States. Why are there so many illegal aliens? Because this is a great country that God has smiled on it. But I don't know how long that's going to be if we all just do our own thing and don't follow the laws of the land. And we put in people that do not upheld, uphold our Constitution, won't pledge allegiance to the flag, won't be a person that uh, they read the books uh, uh, post-America and all these. <clears throat> Before we run out of time, uh, there's something in my mind I think we need to talk about. 
There needs to be, regardless of who gets elected this election year, there needs to be an accounting for all the situations you're talking about. And the big question comes up as soon as you say something like that, who's going to do this accounting and who's going to add up the answers and who's going to make the decision as to, well, this is what we're going to do from now on. There's nobody or no group that anybody wants to trust to come up with those answers or to interpolate the information and then say, okay, that's accurate. So we all believe that now we can make a good decision and this is what we're going to do. We don't come to that situation. We don't answer that. It's almost like you have to have God to come back to answer those questions. Now, my next question is, so what are we going to do about it? How are we going to take all these situations and each one of us has his own pet situation that he wants to say well here's the example that you should look at here's what's happening just like the things that you went through but do you know probably each one of the people you're talking about see the situation a little differently because the people that don't have anything are looking at well this guy has so much I want a little bit of it but he doesn't necessarily want to work and earn it. Most of the people who have the big bucks started out with next to nothing. But this country is a free country, and we can get in and work and earn and grow and learn and get better, and next year do a little better, and the next year a little better. And the people who will work, are going to be the people that end up with what's valuable, whether it's money or property or whatever it is. It's the people that are willing to go get it that earn it. They should get it, and they should be able to do with it pretty much what they want to. And if you start taxing the guy who will get out and work, pretty soon he's going to say, what's the point? If you're going to take it anyway, you go earn it. That, that will become the attitude, and that's the destruction of a country. That's what I'm concerned about. Wow. The good points that you're making there. And uh, what do you think some of the solutions or a solution to any of the challenges are? Communicate and communicate honestly. Don't be afraid that take your stand what you believe but also don't be so hard-headed and stiff-necked that you won't pay attention to right and correct information and good decisions but we're given the freedom to go vote so we're going to go vote and if the guy we voted in doesn't do right we say it's his fault he did all this no i voted for some of the people that got in and did not do a good job. I voted for some who got in and did a very good job. I voted for some that could go one way or the other. That's the way life, that's how life is. I think it's so wonderful to live in a country where uh, when you are doing something wrong, like Clinton got impeached and I guess... Uh, Nixon got impeached, and a lot of the heads of these companies that are doing the wrong thing, they are being put in prison. That is so exciting to me, to know that we have a country that uh, wants to. If a president needs to be impeached, he can be impeached. If he's not doing the right thing, what a great, wonderful part. And it's not just one or the other. It's, uh, in that case, one was a Democrat and one was a Republican. And they both were impeached for uh, wrongdoings. And that's that's beautiful that we can say the uh, large companies of the world are in the United States can be, if they're found out to do wrong, and there are people who care enough to check them out and to be the 
whistleblowers for them, there is an answer that there's enough good people in the United States and the world that love the Lord Jesus Christ, that love doing right, that that is a possibility that that can, that can happen. I know my mama knew all about if you don't do right. She sent me out for my own peach limb. And I remember one time we sent our son out to get his, and he came back with, what happened with that? He found a big red feather in one of your hats, and he brought that to us. And I had to laugh so bad I couldn't hit the poor kid, couldn't spank him. <laughs> but the Bible very well says, uh, the child, uh, spare the rod and spoil the child. So we have a right, according to the Bible, to discipline our children and to make them... To discipline them, but not to physically harm them. No. With love. That's with love, to show love for them. And I think that the good people will... Uh, to me, all the challenging things that have gone wrong in our country started when our daughter was in school and they came one day, they used to read the Bible and they took prayer out of school in 1962. Since then, it's a lot of children do not know right from wrong. So what I, I would say is let the Bible be read in church, not as a certain nationality or certain religion or spiritual, but just as you do history books. You now love the History Channel, and you used to hate the history. So what would you say in the final moments of something that we can do to make our country and our families better? Think before you act. Be considerate of other people. Because everybody has an opinion, and everybody has a nose. And some opinions that we have, if our nose takes a hold of it, we don't have that opinion anymore. Because some of our opinions actually don't smell so good. Um, try harder. Be forgiving. Love each other. And... Uh, Remember that you're not perfect either. I, what? Everybody but you and me. Sometimes I wonder about you. <laughs> you are. <laughs> you, said, you told me you are. Oh, yeah, I keep telling you I am. Uh, okay, well, hey, you didn't believe everything I ever said. When, uh, but what we'd like to encourage you to do in this program is uh, go and vote. Vote for someone that has the same philosophy that you have. The same, uh, not to get something free, but to have, to make us a better world, a better country, a better state, a better, uh, we have actually 30 more seconds if there's anything you'd like to add to it. No, I think I'm through. <laughs> but we want to really encourage you to go out and Boat. And we want to thank Sandy Newton for coming to run camera for us today and for Tony taking his lunch hour to come and let us do this program so we could encourage you. Tony pays for this, and we want to encourage you to vote. I'm Bonnie Libhart, along with Tony Libhart, and bless your heart for me.